I am very excited to have my next guest join us. He just dropped a brand new mixtape called For Abby. It is the one and only Johnny. Dude, how are you? I'm good. I'm as good as someone could be in these weird times, you know? I'm just chilling. We were just chatting about how cool your studio looks. Yeah, and I was just observing your immaculate background here. Look at that. You know, I bought it on Amazon. Back in the wall <laughs> <here>. <laughs> This is quite surprising, I, I gotta say. It, it, I would expect something that's a little bit more of a single man type thing, you know, where you yeah. have maybe some posters or artwork or... I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Where are you right no, now? No, <laughs> no. I have a I have a girlfriend that does happen to come over. Uh, I I don't think she would allow that. You know, I don't think she would allow the single man bachelor pad. <laughs> she wouldn't let me live like that. As she shouldn't too. You, no one should let their man live like that. That would be that would be awful. You know, I need some nice paintings like you in the background. I have one up here. It's like a fan drew it of one of my cover arts. So I have that, but other than that, I don't want to turn my camera around because my room is pretty bare. And it's kind All right. Of <laughs> All right. And I could tell that you are living with a girl or you have a girl because I could, uh, with the, uh, what is it, the floating shelves. Nope. That is just me. I was watching Queer Eye for a straight guy and I saw some shelves on the wall and I was like, I'm going to Amazon that because that's nice. But I'm going to tell her that you said that and she's going to feel really big headed and think that she's awesome. But it was my idea. I swear on my life. It was my I stand corrected and even more props to you, my friend. Thank you so much. <laughs> so I got to say, I've been looking forward to this because we got to show love for folks from the Bay and you repping, rapper, repping yes. various parts of the Bay Area, right? Yeah. Well, I, I'm a fake Bay rapper. I don't know if you're going to, you live in San Francisco, so I'm sweating a little bit right now, but um, I lived in like Vacaville. I lived in Fairfield. I lived like outside of Oakland. I live like all over Solano County. So everywhere that I've lived has been like a 10 minute drive to Oakland or like a 35 minute drive to San Francisco. But I've always just said the Bay because it's just way easier than being like, well, I'm the Bay, but I'm like, I'm like 10 minutes out by Oakland. <laughs> but it's the same thing. But I also didn't know if you were going to kill me for saying that. You know what I mean? Because you know, some people I are. Okay, I don't have a problem with it. I know people that okay, may cool. have a problem with it. Because if you're like, oh. people that are like, you live five minutes outside of Oakland. That's an Oakland dog. Like, what? Like, right, like, yeah. Oh. You're 707. You're from Sacramento. Yeah, Sacramento doesn't count. And I did live in Sacramento before, but I didn't put that in there. You're self-taught, right? You learn how to play guitar. Uh, you learn how to work Fruity Loops and, and all the uh, electronic uh, computer-based software to create sounds and things like that. What were the sounds that you were trying to reach for in those early days? I was definitely inspired by just the all-around movement of that first wave of people that were like uploading music to the internet that didn't sound like it was recorded in a recording studio. Like when the still woozies and all these people that got categorized as like quote unquote. And I don't, I'm not putting them in this box. I feel like DSPs put them in this box, but like bedroom pop. And I hate using that word. And I hated that I even said that, but I was getting really into that when that first started coming out. And I was listening to a lot of Alex G at the time. Who's like kind of this just really like lo-fi recording artist. I was listening to a lot of Daniel Johnston, um, so my first wave was like completely influenced by like lo-fi music. So I was using like cassette recorders and four tracks. And I was like, I need to make it sound old, man. I need to be a cool art kid and make my music sound old on purpose. Um, then after like a year of that, I kind of like branched out and I was like, okay, I don't think this is for me. Why don't I just not try to be other people? And I try to do something that's me. When I finally started putting it out, it started like actually getting traction and like getting when playlisting was like just becoming a thing. It started getting on playlists and it was being put in bedroom pop and indie and all that. And it gave me like the push I needed to be like, whoa, maybe I can keep going. Cause you know, I kept going that year and I dropped like 13 songs, I think in a year. Um, and it just kind of got my wheels turning. The music resonates. You put out some more stuff. You know, I'm going to fast forward a little bit here. Next thing you know, you put out, honey pie and yeah. then it really takes off yeah and do you think it took off too fast too much looking back now yeah not that i would trade it 
but uh factually yeah <laughs> it did i went from you know i was doing okay i would say i was happy with where i was at i was get i had songs with like 980,000 800,000 700,000 that was like my average at that point and i was chilling because i was a baby artist when i was you know 2017 2018 i was just getting my feet wet like it takes years to like cultivate up to the big leagues you know and when it just like factually became like one of the biggest independent indie songs of the summer (laughs) like even that sentence freaks me out still like that i just feel weird even saying that because it's kind of creepy uh it scared the shit out of me having to deal with how do I top that with, or that's my initial thought is I thought I had to top it or I thought I had to like compete with it or I thought my next single needed to do the same. And so I was going into recording like way different than I was before. I, Cause I was in my head, I was thinking about these label meetings and the executives and the song and the streams and the viral charts. And like, I couldn't write music cause I was writing music before because I liked doing it and I wasn't expecting it to ever do that. And so there was like a five month period after where I couldn't even write a song because I was I got the yips. I just like couldn't do it. I like got I signed my deal and got scared and just like stopped making music. And I spent the first four and a half months of quarantine just writing a new record and uh, erasing everything in my head about topping a song or competing with the song or giving a fuck if the song get what the streams of it are. And was like, if I'm just making a record for myself that I love and that my fans love, like, what would it sound like? And then Four Abbey came to fruition and I'm really happy I beat the yips and I made a record that I'm really proud of. This is so inspiring to hear because you hear how the trappings of the industry are just so tempting for various people, just as humans, right? We're always looking for that taste of acceptance, looking for that taste of success and whatever the personal reasons may be. And you had the self-awareness. Was there anybody or anything that was kind of a catalyst to help push you into the, this realistic point of view? Uh, yeah, I mean, if I'm, if I'm keeping it completely a buck, um, when I was dating my ex-girlfriend who also is an artist and she's doing things and doing very well for herself, that was really crazy to see. I was being so close to somebody that was kind of a step ahead of me in the game with no names being said, but she like, I would just see how hard she was working. And then there was a part of me that would start to get depressed because I had the yips and I was, I wasn't doing anything. Um, so then fast forward to when I'm on tour I go through a breakup before that tour, but I'm single now I'm on tour. I'm playing these songs like don't feel right. And I just kind of came home on the energy of like, well, like I feel like I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Like I've seen how other people work and they work hard. I see how my friends work and they're working really hard. I see how my ex partner was working. They're working very hard. Like what am, why, why was I not doing that? Like, what did I do? I got sucked into it so fast. I was, I had a song blow up and I'm going on all these planes and I'm going on all these flights and finally like accumulated and it bubbled. And I'll, I'll never forget. I had a call with my team and my A&R at the time, Aaron and everyone. And then eventually like everyone hopped off the line, but me and my A&R, Aaron, and I, I had told him, I just confided in him. was like, yo, I'm like, like, this is like my one shot, man. Like, like I feel like I'm, up and he just gave me some really good advice where he's like dude like i've been in a and i've been in publishing and like this happens all the time like a new artist comes in they get signed and they start to get scared and everything changes they get in their head they never come out of it and they miss their one opportunity to like show the world that they're good at what they do and then they kick themselves for 30 years and they tell their wife and their kids about the story back in the day where they had the one in a million shot and they never did anything with it or there's this lane over here where you overcome that. You show everybody what you could do. There's a reason why you got into this. There's a reason why the label signed you. There's a reason why you are the one in the million. There's a reason why your song resonated with people. You show everyone that you can do what you can do. And then you have a long, fruitful career. And I took that path. I was like, I'm, I'm trying to get out of this. And so um, I made a record. I, along with everyone else, 
who's a fan of you or learning about you are totally glad that that's the path you took because this, <laughs> yeah. this collection of material is awesome, man. And I'm glad that you kind of escaped this whole, I'm the TikTok guy personality or what have you, right? This is more, as you say, more Jacob than anything. Thank you. We're approaching the holidays. Also, your birthday is coming up and this is the big two five. 25. How are you approaching this? And are there, what, what are the plans for celebration? I'm terrified. It's halfway to 30 and I'm not happy about it. And I still sound like I'm 14 years old. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, still, I'm not stoked. Uh, I, for plans, I don't really have anything planned, to be honest. I, I don't really celebrate my birthday. I don't ask for like cake or for my girlfriend to buy me a gift or anything like that. I just want to wake up on that day and be healthy and have another day here on earth. And like whatever happens that day happens. I don't know. I don't have any big plans. I feel like it's a really boring answer, but I don't have any big plans. For hey, we're in quarantine. I'm not, I wasn't expecting like a big uh, super spreader <laughs> yeah. party or anything like that. I feel like we might drive to like Arizona and get an Airbnb or something. Just stay there for a day. Maybe you can build some other shelves, floating shelves. Yeah, exactly. I'll build a shelf on my birthday. This is your life. <laughs> Big fan of your music. Really proud of you. Can't wait to see you back on tour at some point and really appreciate your time. Early happy birthday and happy holidays. Hey, thank you so much. And thank you for a great time, Pete, too. Thank you for your time today.